A warm welcome to all. My name is Sindhu. I am working as an assistant professor in Karpagam Academy of Higher Education. The subject which I am going to handle is uh, repair and rehabilitation of structures. It consists of seven lecture series. Each lecture series consists of 10 to 15 minutes. So these are the lecture series which I am going to present in the upcoming sessions. So the lecture series one is introduction to repair and rehabilitation of structures. Lecture series two is special concrete. Lecture series three is non-destructive testing techniques. And lecture series four is epoxy injection. And lecture series 5 is corrosion protection techniques. Lecture series 6 is strengthening of structural elements. And lecture series 7 is demolition techniques. The contents for the lecture series are maintenance and rehabilitation of structures, special concrete, techniques for repair, repair, rehabilitation and retrofitting of structures. So now we are going to see the maintenance and repair strategies. So in which the basic definitions include maintenance, repair, rehabilitation, strengthening or retrofitting. So in maintenance, the maintenance should be uh, based on the inspection and works necessary to fulfill the functions of the structure. So next is repair. So repair in the sense uh, it is uh, used for modifying the damaged structure. Rehabilitation is restoring the structure to its service life. So strengthening or retrofitting is so come bringing back to its original state or uh, strengthening the buildings for their efficiency improving the efficiency or modifying the structure for the necessary enlarged areas so the main need for repair and rehabilitation of structure is the distress or damage in a structure so this this distress or damage is due to the strength effect in strength chemical action and biological action that plays a vital role which changes the characteristics of the building so this has to be taken into care so the basic defects in a structure is due to the following categories so which is cracking of the concrete and spalling of the concrete, physical damage of the concrete, increased porosity of the concrete and uh, corrosion of the reinforcing steel due to the external agents like moisture or some other chemical reagents and excessive deflection and uh, misalignment of the structure in its state. So the causes for delamination is uh, which I have marked in the slide. So in which the concrete is delaminated due to the corrosion or uh, some other external agents like alkali aggregate reaction or sulfur attack or many causes may be there for the delamination of the structure with in which the concrete spals and the inner portion of the reinforcement the surface of the reinforcement can be visible so next is alkali aggregate reaction so in which the alkalis in the aggregate react with the silica present in the cement so which causes the uh, reaction and the reactive products will get settled in the voids of the concrete so these voids keep on expanding when the uh, chemical reaction takes place and these voids create a micro cracks and uh, due to which the concrete cracks and uh, spalling delamination and other other causes of defects uh, takes place uh, aggressively. So in sulphate attack the waterborne sulphate gets accumulated inside the concrete in the voids of the concrete. These uh, sulphates get reacted with the silica present in the concrete and it uh, affects the foundation so these uh, sulfates get accumulated and uh, it uh, creates the compression or uh, tension and uh, creates micro cracks and uh, further the crack develops when this uh, sulfate ingress into the concrete and the cracks when developed it creates the delamination and that's why the foundation is mainly affected due to this sulfate attack the reaction in the sulfate attack is uh, the sulfate ions get mixed with the cement matrix and it forms the gypsum plus ettrignite so these cement and uh, and uh, sulfate gives the gypsum and the ettrignite which accumulates and forms the micro cracks and it uh, further causes delamination these gypsum content get expanding in its volume this expansion creates the stress due to the stress the concrete gets cracked so these cracks further develop when uh, further sulfate gets ingressed into the concrete so that the sulfate attack cause some defects so next we are going to see about the chloride attack so in chloride attack the chloride ions penetrate through the voids of the concrete through moisture content so these moisture contents carries the chloride ions and uh, these chloride ions will get penetrated into into the concrete through its voids so when these voids gets expanding and once it reaches the surface of the steel these chloride ions start reacting with the iron content in the steel so these chloride ions and uh, the iron content that is, that is cl minus plus fe plus react and uh, further it forms the rust so these rust particles will get accumulated in the voids of the concrete so when it is get accumulated in the voids of the concrete so the voids of the concrete is get filled with the rust so these rust keeps on expand that is the volume gets increased the vo the void volume get increased and this volume creates the tension stress in the concrete this tension stress causes the further development of the crack so and the crack when it is further developed the concrete get spalled 
and then it is delaminated and the surface of the steel reinforcement is exposed and this is how the chloride attack takes place so next we are going to see about the freezing and thawing effect of the concrete so when it is when the concrete is freezed the moisture content inside the concrete gets expanding in its volume so these uh, expansion causes the capillary reaction in which this expansion creates a tension and the co concrete get cracked so next is thawing so in this thawing the when the moisture content is expelling out of the concrete and uh, the concrete get shrinked in its volume so this creates the these continuous shrinking and uh, expansion causes cracks in the concrete so the corrosion inhibitors and uh, cathodic uh, protection techniques can be used to prevent the steel or concrete corrosion so the preventive measures that should be followed during construction is list out in this slide so the it consists of two major categories so which is design aspect and construction aspect so under design aspect we have to consider the low water cement ratio high concrete strength high minimum cement content high concrete cover proper detailing of the reinforcement moderate stress level so these are the strategies which should be kept in mind during design aspects so in construction aspects adequate compaction and adequate curing and uh, protection of uh, impervious concrete and uh, it needs remedy uh, progressive maintenance and uh, in case of pre-stressed and prefabricated structures the grouting of the pre-stressed uh, concrete should be done and it should be maintained regularly next we are going to see about the preventive measures for different distress so the, the different distress may include movement of the formwork and erosion etc so the movement of the formwork is mainly due to the absorption of the moisture from the fresh concrete so these leads to the micro cracks or swelling of the concrete so this can be prevented by giving a coating layer to the former so next is erosion so the erosion can be prevented by using some high strength concrete so now we are going to see about the next topic which is inspection so the inspection in the sense we have to inspect the repaired or uh, the structure to be repaired or the structure that is uh, distressed or damaged the various stages of inspect includes you have to observe the nature of the distress type of the distress and extent of the damage and its classification so the major causes for the distress and you have to prepare a document and uh, after that you have to collect some samples samples for laboratory analysis and you have to plan the in situ testing and then uh, the special environmental effects that should be considered and also the information of the load acting on the structure should also be collected during inspection period and the preventive measure to uh, stop the further distress should be planned so next we are going to see the various aspects of inspection so which is given in the flow chart so these flow chart consists of the various strategies that should be followed while inspecting so the first thing is you have to do a conditional survey so in conditional survey you have to take a visual inspection of the building so next you have to give a non restrictive testing destructive testing so based on these types we have to give a soil in investigation structural uh, investigation and a preliminary investigation these things should be carried out so next is demolition or uh, demolish or make aware of the users for the threat of life so next you have to decide uh, immediate repair that is a repair in the sense you have to strengthen or retrofit the structure and the selection of the rehabilitation system you have to process so after that you have to do the structural anal reanalysis of the structure and rehabilitation system which should be followed for uh, uh, building the structure or renovate the structure next you have to give a cost benefit analysis and then you have to execute the rehabilitation work so the rehabilitation work may include the repair or retrofit measures that should be carried out in a structure so next we have to do a general assessment so in this general assessment you have to give the description of the number of stories and dimension of the building so next is structural system you have to describe the structural system based on the load resisting system floors diaphragms basements foundation system etc and next is you have to give the non structural element uh, the description so which may include the building type performance level resistant region of seismic city soil type building occupancy etc so these should be considered while doing a conditional survey so next we are going to see the visual inspection so in which a detailed plan showing the architectural and structural layout so which indicates the modifications done should be done if any so next is the plan should be checked out for its damages and the individual structural elements like uh, slabs beams column stairs and uh, shear wall water tanks infills non structural element everything electrical wiring plumbing so each and everything should be clearly analyzed 
so next is you have to note the crackings deterioration or damage or uh, distress in a structure and you have to note the dead load and live load that is acting in the building so next the horizontal and vertical movements of the building should be clearly checked out and uh, the types of uh, during the type of construction what material they have used and uh, every, each and everything should be photographed after visual inspection you have to do a non destructive testing so in that you have to locate the weakness so based on the weakness you have to do the non destructive testing at those points so these non destructive testing includes the compressive strength of the concrete uniformity of the concrete homogeneity of the concrete presence of cracks voids deflection depth everything should be clearly tested using a non destructive testing so next is you have to determine the in situ compressive strength of the structure at uh, the current uh, compressive strength of the structure and a small course of the chemical test can also be carried out to determine the chloride and sulfate content in the concrete so next you have to detect the carbonation depth and uh, how to de define the crack depth and next you have to locate the reinforcement and uh, diameter of the bars at present detecting the corrosion activity and you have to map the corrosion so in soil investigation uh, you have to do the various process like uh, drilling of bore holes a bore hole report can be prepared and you have to collect the samples both disturbed and undisturbed samples can be collected and you have to collect the standard penetration depth test to note on the depth of the water table based on the samples collected from the field you have to carry out the following laboratory investigation which includes bulk density and moisture content for the collected samples grain size analysis of the soil index properties of the soil shear test should be carried out the shear test mainly includes triaxial shear test consolidation test and confined compression test can also be carried out for the collected samples so based on the conditional surveying and uh, visual inspection field investigation and uh, laboratory investigation you should prepare a detailed report so the reports may include the test results and uh, drainage property of the soil physical property and strength of the soil and allowable beginning capacity and possibility of liquefaction etc and a detailed report can be provided and uh, in case of superstructures the reports can be modified based on the plan and uh, the distress or damage cracks uh, delamination and in uh, deflection cracking everything should be considered during preparing a report and a suitable repair and rehabilitation can be given now let me conclude this session that you have understood about the various causes for distress or damage in a structure and the various aspects of inspection and uh, based on this inspection you might have uh, able to know how to prepare a report and then in our next session we'll be carrying out the special concretes thank you